Hello everyone and welcome back to Silverberry. This is our Arctic biome here in Taito Ecology and already I am seeing a few things that are making me a little bit nervous, namely a lot of little links. Oh my gosh, I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five. I think I just saw another one wander by six links already. Oh you guys, we're gonna have to see what has happened to our populations of wild rabbits. Well, everything is wild in this biome, but we're gonna have to see what has happened to our arctic hare populations and our lemming populations now that we have been away for another three months and i'm not sure if the signs are very good i see some baby plants growing everywhere and here is our population of arctic bees oh look at them go all right work hard ladies work hard we need to spread those plants all over the place and there's another lynx and there's a dead rabbit but I'm not really seeing, there's a little ermine. Oh, thank goodness, they're, they're still surviving. And do I have some Arctic hare populations? There's so many lynx. Are they supposed to have this many babies so fast? All right, everybody, welcome back to the Silverberry biome. And we're going to see how things have spread. It looks like the forest is doing okay. I don't know if it's spread since we last looked at it. That forest definitely has not. And let's go ahead and see... Multiple groups of arctic hares have died. A group of lemmings have died. Multiple groups of lemmings have low population. A group of arctic hares have died. Uh, multiple groups of lemmings have died. Okay, so basically it looks like our prey populations have really take a hit, taken a hit. So let's go ahead and see. <gasps> we have almost nobody left. How are these lynx? They're just eating everything. Lynx, don't you understand? Nine juveniles. You need to stop having babies. You guys realize you are going to cause some major issues. I, I can't believe this. They have overeaten all of our lemmings. How are we even going to begin? Do I just have to put down like so many herbivores that we can't even shake a stick at it? How are we possibly even going to remotely keep these guys alive? Am I going to have to start playing with a little bit more focus towards exactly where the populations are? I'm so nervous about this, you guys. I'm just going to start throwing down lemmings and throwing down arctic hares every single spot I can possibly reach because this is just... This is just chaotic. The lynx are the, the first carnivore we have added in, and yet we're not even able to begin keeping their population stable. I don't know if maybe some lynx are just not supposed to make it, but at this rate, we aren't even going to have a single population of arctic hare or a single population of lemming survive either. Ah, oh, this is just, this is very stressful. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have to start spreading some of the populations out I think what we're gonna do is we have lynx territory over here now, right? And it's a pretty darn big territory and we have two overlapping territories So I'm going to start working on trying to spread our forest down here as well Putting in a ton of the big old um, the big old trees We're gonna add a whole bunch of these pine trees the white spruce trees, excuse me down over here and maybe if we start making periphery territories or the lemmings and where the arctic hares and maybe some ground squirrels yay we got a little bit of income but maybe if we start making some territory where they can kind of thrive down here we may give those prey animals a bit of an escape from these <laughs> from these links so that they can have a chance to have babies and then their babies can be the ones that dangerously spread into this territory but let's start putting some of our prey populations on the edge of lynx territory if not entirely out of lynx territory because at this rate i don't know if silverberry biome is going to survive long enough that we're going to be able to have caribou and things like that so let's start with some of the bear berries and let's start with some of the other types of awesome plants that we can put down. Ooh, including a lot of cotton grass, which is really hard to see because it's so tiny. Look at it, just these little puffs, but hopefully adding in enough of these little poofy puffs will actually start making it so that our bees will have something to eat. Look at the lynx, they're just, they're just killing everything. Oh, I have no idea how we're gonna keep them all alive. It's very tricky. They don't even know what's good for them. And maybe another puff of cotton grass down here. This apparently is a favorite food of the caribou. So we want to have lots and lots of it for the future caribou more than anybody else. Can I add some horsetail down next to this lake? That would be kind of nice. See the horsetail start spreading over here. And then let me go ahead and we're going to put down, I think I'm going to put down some arctic bumblebees under this big old spruce tree. And we'll have to see where things can start spreading. I am just so, I just, I just can't believe 
that the carnivores are just ripping through all of my... I mean, look how many territories we have. All of my herbivore territories so quickly. How on earth do you guys... Do you guys have, like, stable populations of herbivores when you have the lemmings involved? Should I add an arctic fox? Who is the main carnivore? Like, what is a, what is a threat to a lynx? Let's find out. Maybe I need to balance this out by putting some uh, predatory pressure on top of our lynxes. And predators. While lynx do not have any natural predators, their young are vulnerable to wolves, bears, and other large carnivores. I wonder if adding a bear into the forest would actually solve some of these problems. Is it worth it to risk adding one grizzly bear? What do you guys think? Do you think that's what's going to solve all of this? Putting a grizzly bear in there? Hmm. Diet. Grizzly bears are omnivorous and will generally eat whatever is most available to them. They will forage for fruits, nuts, and tubers and also eat and often eat insect larvae. In northern areas, grizzly bears are more carnivorous. Their enormous size and powerful front paws allow them to take down prey as large as moose or even black bears. Hmm. Hmm. So that might be useful. Who else do I have all together? Here, I have polar bear, moose, wolverine, who is a carnivore. I do have wolves, but I think that we definitely don't have enough prey populations for wolves. Um, I feel like maybe one grizzly bear roaming the woods might balance some of this out a little bit, maybe? That's, that's kind of my desperate plea, my desperate, desperate hope. Uh, let's get down into the tiny little extra forest bit that we're making. And let me at least add in the Arctic bumblebee. And you know what? I think I'm I'm desperate enough. I just may think that adding in, we're gonna put a couple lemming populations down here, and hopefully my lemmings will really be able to spread. But if I'm gonna add a lot of lemmings, then I need to remember to put down a whole bunch of the bear berries actually, because they really like the bear berries due to the fruit capacity the bear berries give out. So let me actually give the lemmings right into the center of their territory, a nice little bearberry patch. And actually we'll, we'll make a nice patch right in front of where the bees are too. So hopefully they won't go, they won't have to roam too far from over here. And if they stay over here, they won't be eaten by absolutely everything under the sun. All right, and let's get down maybe some mushrooms over here too. Why not add in a few mushrooms? And then the jewel lichen, of course. I definitely need to add that in because it is so beloved by the lemmings. Do you remember a few episodes ago? Look at how many of those populations are about to die already. <gasps> That's just terrible. But do you guys remember how a few episodes ago we actually had um, all the lemmings just come running, running right over to where the jewel lichen was? That was so cool. And we already lost a group of bunnies. <sighs> man excuse me a group of the arctic hares maybe if i put them over here i think i'm gonna put a group of lemmings uh we'll put some bear berries down and i'm gonna put down a group of lemmings and a group of arctic hares over here and then we can at least have them in this corner of the biome and we can see if they can survive the onslaught oh this is just, it's quite intense. They'd be far, far away outside of the lynx territory at least. So let me go ahead and add in another patch of bear berries first. And then we will put down some of the arctic hares. And they should be, they should be safe right here. They don't have to worry. They don't have to go very far. They'll have everything that they need. You guys have no idea how much you want to just stay right over here. Trust me, you don't want to travel very far beyond this zone. Um, and then we'll add in a little group of lemmings as well. Wonderful. So, wait, why are the lemmings? Why aren't they doing good? Oh, wait, now they're doing good. Okay, good. So the lemmings and the arctic hares over here at least should be fine. I'm actually tempted. In fact, let's add in an arctic ground squirrel, perhaps? It is an omnivore, but for the most part, it'll probably focus on eating uh, the plant matter that's available. So let me get some energy really quickly. I'm in the mood to really do some good work on the arctic biome, can you tell? And we're gonna get some more bear berries. Again, the bear berries we're focusing on primarily because they provide fruit, and that is a really important food source for a ton of the animals. But I am trying to mix in some of the other types of plants too, especially the cotton grass, which we want for the caribou, the future caribou, and some of these little flowers because they're so cool, and it's just nice to have a good variety of plants available. Let's see, and then maybe another jewel lichen, and I'm gonna buy more energy. Another jewel lichen over here, maybe a caribou moss or two. Yeah, we've got a couple caribou moss already, so I'll put another one down here. 
And then let's go ahead and I do want to just try out the ground squirrel and just see what the ground squirrel thinks about all this nonsense. So what do the ground squirrels look like? Oh, they're so cute, you guys. They're so cute. Look at them. All right, down we go. Oh, he's adorable. Look at that. I love it. 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 That's so cute. Look at you, buddy. And if you guys remember, we'll go look at the ground squirrel really quickly to get some of the information about it. Where'd the ground squirrel go? You're somewhere in here, little one. There we go. Arctic ground squirrel. Diet foragers at heart. Arctic ground squirrels eat plants, invertebrates, eggs, birds, and carrion. When pressed, they will even eat the small, rod small rodents like lemmings. The majority of their diet consists of plant matter. So hopefully they will primarily focus on eating plants and they won't focus on eating lemmings. I really hope they won't. Um, and they should, let's see. They live in shallow underground burrows and they only... Apparently, they have a really specific two-week period in April when they breed following hibernation. Males typically breed with multiple females. Females give birth to one litter per year. A litter ranges anywhere from two to ten pups, and they can survive up to ten years in the wild. Wow. All right. Arctic ground squirrels are the third most abundant form of small prey in their habitats, prompting predators to seek them out when snowshoe hare populations are low. Ooh, I wonder if that implies then... That, whoops, that in places like this, ah, uh, there we go, that in places like the Arctic, maybe the Arctic ground squirrel population is supposed to be the absolute most abundant thing that we see. So I'll remember that. All right, so that little forest back there, they've got some troopers who can hopefully carry on and really get to breeding up the babies. And then we're going to come over here and I'm going to add in, let me put in some more trees. I want to have a white spruce tree over here. He's going to be like a granddaddy tree. Big old tree to hopefully provide a safe space. <laughs> a little safe spot where our little arctic hares can go. Just trying to keep these lynx... Oops, didn't mean to cancel that. Just trying to keep these lynx alive through keeping their prey populations going is just amazingly hard. All right, so there we go. Got a whole bunch of the bear berries. And I'll get... Oh, no, I need more. More energy! More! I demand more! I'm spending too many of our Taito coins, so I need to be careful about that. Alright, we'll get some of the jewel lichen down here, because everybody seems to really enjoy that. And some of the diamond leaf willow, which I hope will spread over time. There we go. And then maybe even some more of the Arctic bumblebee, actually. I do think that a few of the creatures here will actually eat the Arctic bumblebee, so let's check on that. Uh, predators in the wild. Some types of birds eat these bumblebees or feed them to your young. In your biome, any insectivore will consume them. All right, so they would make a good, uh, a good little snack for some of our little herbivores or omnivores, I should say. Oh my goodness, we've already lost so many snowshoe hare populations and the lemming population. The lemming populations over here seem to be just clinging, so on the very edges of lynx territory. So maybe we're just going to have to start playing along the edges now instead of actually being straight front and center where we have a whole bunch of the... Actually, is this far enough? Okay, not quite far enough for some of the arctic bees, so we'll put another group down here. But maybe instead of putting the prey populations, as would make sense, uh, right in the center of our predator population, this is really what we need to do. We need to start putting them just along the edges. So maybe I'll start lining up. This is going to be our little hair retreat where they can just have tons of babies right up along the side here. There we go. And we'll just have a whole bunch of arctic hares. I mean, a ton of them. There's going to be just a gigantic line of bunnies. There we go. Because apparently they're supposed to be like ridiculously common. I'm going to put a little group of lemmings kind of on the edge over here. And maybe another group over here. And maybe it's just these little edge groups who are really going to save the day and keep our populations from dying out. And then we also need to provide little patches of food for them to enjoy in between the areas. So hopefully this will do it. Because I really think I need to start paying far more attention than we used to need to about exactly where the territory markers line up. And it'll be the edge territories. Why did you have more babies? There's 12 juvenile lynxes now. They're just 
Ah, uh, I feel like I, I'm gonna add in a bear. I feel like I should just try adding in a bear because maybe the bear will actually focus and I need to add in a lot more bear berries actually because maybe having a bear will actually provide like a spot where um, the bear will keep the lynx population in check because if the lynx population continues unchecked like this, it's not going to end well, you guys. We're going to end up losing everything and everybody. Uh, thankfully, the only thing that really seems to be quite happy right now are the plants because they're starting to spread. You can see little baby plants kind of popping up all over the place. They're starting to spread quite happily because the animals are dying off so fast they're not getting a chance to be eaten. So uh, that's happening. All right. So let's see what's going on. A group of Arctic hares is starving. Where are you starving? Oh, no. Why are you starving over here? Well, it's because you're being eaten. They're, they're, the reason they were starving is they were being so busy being chased <laughs> that they couldn't get any food. That's just tragic. And I don't know about adding in a bear, but at the same time, maybe it would work out. Am I just playing with fire then? I feel like I'd be playing a little bit with fire. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? Let's start with some caribou. I think we're just about to the point where there's enough food that the caribou should be able to find something. And then maybe we can at least start with some baby caribou and some baby moose starting to wander around the place before we add in something huge like the grizzly bear. So I'm going to spend some buckaroos getting the uh, the caribou. Um, I hope I have enough food. And let's see what a caribou population, like where their territory, would, what it would look like. Let's put it right here. And we're going to do it, you guys. We're going to put them in. I don't think they're at risk from the lynx. And they're quite awesome looking. And, oh, it's called caribou moss probably for a reason. And we will make sure there's plenty of caribou moss down. Oh, my gosh. They're so awesome. Look at them. Wow. That's so beautiful. If this isn't an Arctic biome, I don't know what is. This is just so classic. Oh my gosh, they're gorgeous, you guys. I'm in love. I am so in love with them. Now we're going to have to see where they're going to go eat. All right, let's pop up. And where are you going off to to go eat, my friend? All right, this one. This one came kind of over here. Let's keep an eye on him and see where he's headed to get some food. We'll put down patches of caribou moss. So now I think we need to feed all of our herbivores. Oh my goodness, look at this. The bear berry is struggling to deal with the onslaught of all of the hungry, hungry herbivore mouths that we have. So we'll add in another patch of bear berries to hopefully ease that up a little bit. And now let's keep an eye on where's the caribou wandering? Who's the first caribou who is going to go get something to eat? They're going in all sorts of different directions. And let's look at their territory markers again so that I can keep an eye on them. And 32 weeks until reproduction. And they reach herd sizes of 15 before they start splitting up and spreading all over the place. All right. And we're going to try to connect up this area with a whole bunch of bear berry patches so that we can hopefully keep all of the rabbits alive over here. I should say the Arctic hares. Hem <laughs> hem. And hopefully that'll balance out these links. Are they just one week until reproduction again? No, you guys. They're going to keep their own their own population in check just through the sheer fact that all of their babies are going to starve to death. Oh, I cannot believe these links. This is just ridiculous. And this caribou is running towards something. So what are you going for, buddy? Are you going to eat some of those? Uh, what are you going to eat? You've got pretty much everything you can find over here located elsewhere. So why are you coming all the way down here? Ooh, that stuff is actually fruiting now. Okay, so the caribou wanted to come all the way over here to get some bear berry and then alarmingly pass out on its side. It just ate so much of the bear berry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Maybe I've made a bad decision. But this is our first time, and it's so beautiful when all of this is, is fruiting. But this is our first time really trying to run an arctic biome so maybe i have overpopulated it with bunnies now in a desperate desperate attempt to keep my lynx alive um maybe i don't need to keep this many lynx alive and i really need to demand some questions of some of my different some of my my tactics uh with my lynx populations maybe i should put some bunnies down here maybe i should just put tons of arctic hares down here again 
And then how is how are the ermines still alive? They have 12 juveniles? No wonder everybody died. There's 12 ermine juveniles. You know what? I think it's time to add in some sort of mid-level carnivore of some type who can keep some of these guys in check. I don't think it is I don't think it is ridiculous to think about getting a grizzly bear, you guys. So that is going to be our goal next time is snagging a grizzly bear. I think it's about time to keep the lynx population in check. I think it's time to keep some of the other populations in check. And until then, I am just going to be here desperately throwing down gigantic patches of bear berries <laughs> as quickly as I can get my paws on them. And hopefully we can get some diamond leaf willows and some cottontails and other things spreading around the place. Whew. All right. Why? Why do lynx breed so much? Ah, now their population is struggling. What am I going to do? Oh my goodness. Why is this lynx population struggling? What's happening over here? Their hunger is increasing. Wait, it lost a juvenile. Why? Where are they all going? They can't reproduce. They're getting hungry. They're not finding enough food because you ate all of your food. How else am I supposed to keep you alive? <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's gonna look very 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 interesting when we come back next time. So I will see you guys then. Bye bye